Hey guys, what's going on? I'm working on my 1990 Ford Ranger with the 2.9 liter. This is the XLT. Uh, basically, I have a transmission cooler leak. Um, just wanted to show you exactly where it's located for mine, uh, where it's leaking, and how easy it is to replace. I haven't uh, gotten these lines replaced yet, but it's as simple as removing some hose clamps and um, plugging and playing. But best way I figured to do it is get this top plastic piece off, okay? Which is a, a series of these guys. It's plastic screws and a plastic, basically like a trim thing. Once you get that off, a bunch of them. There, there, all the way down. All the way down. You can pull this piece off. Pull it off. Give you a little better access in there, but I went a little step further and actually pulled the front grill off, which is pretty easy too. There's a trim, basically like a push trim, um, a Christmas tree style thing to retain the bumper down here and over here. Up here, there are these little metal Phillips screws. This, there's one up here, and one right over here. I'm gonna take this one out. Once you get that out, And get this out. Not the, oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right, I already have the cooler out, but I'll show you it. This is the old cooler. It looks like this. Pretty messy because it, it's leaking pretty good. But this, you'll see right here facing the truck it'll be bolted up right here and right here and there's two uh, I believe they're 10 millimeter bolts you pull them out the cooler will come out and it's just a matter of undoing these hose clamps or these trans cooler lines and then once you get that you can uh, install your new uh, trans cooler but I'm gonna take it one step further because my truck is being extra special and leaking all the way down. Mind, uh, ignore that wire mess. I'm gonna clean that up later. But these rubber lines go from the cooler, follow down to a bracket right here. See if I can get it right here. That holds it, holds it still and then continues down to swirl that way and that way to hard lines. These are steel lines. And then directly underneath this bracket is uh, more hose clamps. So this is where the rubber lines, or both of them, meet the hard lines. Mine's also leaking there. So the nice thing, I went to O'Reilly's, I'm not sponsored by O'Reilly's, but I went to O'Reilly's and said I needed an oil cooler. Um, I'm sorry, not an oil cooler transmission oil cooler and I got this guy right here and this thing is sweet I'm gonna open it for you guys sorry nothing got around but it's really really nice this is a sweet kit because of the brand new 3 8 line this should be plenty long enough for what I need uh, instructions but I don't read them <laughs> And then the beast. Oh, I'm just kidding, it's a baby. But it's the same 3 8 uh, the same line as the OEM, and the same size 3 8 uh, for uh, put the hose on to. Now, the difference between this one and the other one, the size is very similar. It's actually pretty much identical as far as cooling capabilities. Um, but the only thing that's really different is the mounting points, which is kind of nice because I mean, you can pick your poison where you want to mount it. I'm probably actually going to mount it somewhere a little more, I don't know, I haven't chose yet, but try to maybe stick a little OEM 
but that's this is gonna be the new one now the reason that I'm changing this guy out too is I have I believe I strongly believe that this guy is uh, leaking and possibly even clogged so I think it's worthwhile to change out but like I said very very simple very easy you got two hose clamps down there these two guys these hoses will come off I want to clean up the steel ends that way it gets a nice seal and then you take out there's one I believe it's a 10 millimeter as well uh, kind of like a cell tapper if you will that goes straight into this metal piece and it holds these lines still you take your oil cooler or uh, trans cooler out and that's it I mean it's just basically hose clamps a couple hose clamps a um, couple bolts and you got it made then after you do that it's a matter of this is the trick that I learned um, starting your truck and getting it idling basically have it idle until it gets warmed up as if you're about to take off and what that'll do or allow is your transmission fluid to get to uh, operating temperature or close to it and then you can check your levels and fill it as needed now on this truck the only way to fill it is in the transmission dipstick tube and it's very easy very easy so that's pretty much it once i get this uh installed um i'll post some pictures or something on uh, my facebook account and uh i'll try to paste, uh, post it on youtube as well but uh just a matter of plug and play fill up your fluids and uh yes now i want to also point out that um, in the mornings granted it's like nine degrees out so it's really freaking cold but i'm having shifting issues uh constantly and from my understanding of this system there it, it is a little pressurized system and obviously if you have leaks you're not going to have the right pressure uh, for trans fluid and it's not going to shift right or not want to so this will help um, with some shifting issues if you see any transmission uh, leaks so yep guys if you uh, are interested in seeing any videos on this uh, 1994 Ranger XLT 2.9 liter uh, V6 this is my daily driver uh, just kind of going uh, going through it as I can uh, eventually I will be doing a video on me pulling the transit the transmission and the engine out and completely going through it and all new seals I mean basically tearing her down and rebuilding her but uh yep all right guys if you got any uh, questions feel free to comment uh, please like and subscribe there will be more content on this eventually I'm kind of floating between the Danger Ranger, if you will, and my <clears throat> my autocross slash track 300, uh, aka Midnight Special. So, all right, guys, thank you. Talk to you later.